What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to go over my review score predictions for Hogwarts Legacy. Now, a couple things I want to make very, very clear, and I actually have done this for all my other review score prediction videos. This is not just a Hogwarts Legacy thing, but to keep the theme of who I am and who this channel is or what this channel is, truly, and I mean this in the bottom of my heart, make your own decisions. In general, you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to listen to any of the other Hogwarts Legacy people. You don't have to listen to IGN and Kotaku and Polygon. Make the decision on your own, not just for this game, for any game. I do want to run through kind of where I feel the score is going to be on Metacritic. But I also want to talk about Metacritic and, and reviews in general. So a couple things with that. When it comes to the user scores on Metacritic, okay, don't don't ever look at them. I would say just in general, never look at them ever. And it's mainly because the Metacritic user scores oftentimes get flooded with, well, you would imagine, right? And by the way, it's not just all negative. So we talk about Hogwarts Legacy specifically. I do think there's going to be considerable review, and I don't want to use the word too much just for YouTube purposes. YouTube is atrocious, right? When you purposely bring the score down. A lot of fake scores, a lot of zeros from people that haven't played it, right? Now, I will say, by just kind of a side thing, I've actually always been maybe controversially on the side that you also can never pay attention to those user scores because oftentimes there's fake tens. This happens a lot with kind of fanboy kind of things when it's an Xbox game or PlayStation thing. Yeah, you get a lot of zeros, but you also get a lot of fake 10 out of 10s. And this happens for movies as well, but you know, we're talking about games. So just to kind of throw that in there, when games get zeros, oftentimes look at the tens too, because a lot of those end up being fake as well. Okay, so user scores, don't go buy them ever, literally ever. Review scores from like the critics, well, I would also kind of uh, advise that you don't really look into it all that much. So, a couple things to talk about there, right? Will they bring this game down? The age-old question, will there be a slant to the reviews? I think yes. I think undeniably yes. Maybe even if they don't realize that they're doing it. But I think even the previews were enough information. You know, IGN did a preview, and their preview overall was fine, right? I think it kind of lacked, or it came across as if the person really didn't know anything about Harry Potter lore, but it was okay, it was decent, but then the ending, the last one minute of their preview video, all about JK. So you inject that stuff into the previews, the dislikes definitely were nice to see for that video, but you see that stuff, and I mean, it's not surprising, it happens across the board, right? Now, I don't know who's getting codes for this, okay? Avalanche and Warner Bros. clearly were very picky with who they gave the preview access to, right? Very picky. Now, that could also kind of be a detriment because you don't want just a bunch of people that are going to say nice things about your game. You want to try to find some sort of blend, right? So there's pros and cons. But we really don't know who's going to get it. Is Polygon? Is GameSpot? Will GameSpot even review this thing? There's many of them that we know the writers themselves are anti the game, anti us. They hate us, right? So we know that. We know some of the publications have flat out just said they're not going close to it, right? So who's going to actually take the step to review it? It's probably only going to be select big guns. I, I mean, the Washington Post, I don't think so. Uh, Kotaku, again, GameSpot, I'd even be kind of surprised. We'll see yet again, and people have uh, correctly pointed this out. It's clicks. It's clicks. It's revenue. Ultimately, a lot of your values go down the drain when it comes to money. So I think a lot of these sites that said they weren't going to do it or were going to stay away from it or people, actual individuals, they may still end up doing it, right? So, I mean, why am I saying all that? Well, to be flat out honest, that is a new element to Hogwarts Legacy that most games don't have. Most games don't have going in when you're looking at review scores. The age-old Alex for all of these games would tell you, don't go based off review scores. If the game gets a 70, that doesn't mean it's atrocious. That's actually above average if you think a 5 is average, right? I mean, there's all these kind of small little points when it comes to review scores, right? And also, I hate review scores in general. I don't think games should get a number. I think that's dumb. But that's just my opinion. So normally, I would say that. And I still would. I still will right now for Hogwarts Legacy. However, you have that extra element where no matter how this game is, will there be a little biasness from them, and will the scores be brought down? Now, I don't want to make this entire video all on that. I do want to talk about, you know, where I think the game is going to land and what I think is going to be the, the strengths and negatives. So I've talked about it before. I think the preview event really solidified a lot of my thoughts that I already had. The preview event really didn't do anything all that new or all that special, but it kind of locked into place what I feel 
or I guess how I feel leading into this game and feeling pretty good about it. So this game is going to be a Harry Potter fan's dream, right? Now, talking for review scores, that's a big part of it. This game really, maybe for better or worse, is basically a 50-50 split of a game. Half of it is all about lore, all about canon, all about it's literally the game Potter fans for 20 years that have been subjected to some of the worst games in existence. It's and I'm just kidding. There's actually worse games than the Harry Potter games. But those people have been waiting for this. And I do think the score should reflect that to some degree. Now, again, maybe where I start to separate myself from some of the other Hogwarts Legacy creators, that is not the to, even to me, it's not the biggest thing. It's not. The, it's a it's a huge part of it, but it's not the majority. It's a game. It's an RPG game. So to me, for me personally, it needs to nail those elements as well. If it's just a Harry Potter fan's, you know, dream, that's awesome. That's not the full thing. It needs to be. And so I mentioned the preview event. The preview event, I do think solidified. This looks at worst to be above an above average RPG game. When I saw even IGN talking about how the combat surprised them in a positive, that's good. And I would say that's good for review score as well, right? Because I think, again, going in, you know they're going to nail the aesthetic. You know you're going to feel like you're in Hogwarts. You know it's going to you know, abide by lore. That's, I mean, how many points do you want to give that to start, right? But you would. You would give that. And then there's everything else. If the combat's good, if exploration is good, if the side things, if there's enough things to do in the world... Already, you're looking at a pretty good score, I'd argue. Now, where are some pitfalls, potentially? The livable, is it livable? Does the world feel like it's being lived in? I don't know. The previews didn't sell me on it, and I've never been sold on it, and the, the previews didn't really help. Then you got, I would say, the story and characters. While I have hope that specifically the characters are going to be good, but I think the story as well, I just kind of focus more on like character-centric things, I think they're going to be pretty good. But we don't know that. We do not know that. We, we need to play the entire game. Playing one story mission in the preview event does not tell you if the story or characters is going to be good. So there is still some, and I mentioned these because this is the wiggle room, right? If everything else, say, gets this game to a seven, well, then the, the story and characters, is that going to be the thing that kind of pushes it over the edge? Now, I know I haven't given the score yet, so here's what I'll say. I was one, I was point one off for Forspoken. That's a recent example. I've actually been really good for some unknown reason. I've been pretty good at predicting review scores on Metacritic from journalists for games. I don't know why. It's not an ability I want to have, but it's an ability I do have. So with that being said, I really, in my head, when I close my eyes and I envision Hogwarts' score, I see the low 80s. I see like 83, 84. Technically, if you're looking at like 84, now you're starting to look at like the mid 80s. But I would, if you want to give me some wiggle room, let's say 82 to 85. If you want me to give you a definitive, I see 84 in my head. Okay, I got to go with my gut. I got to go with my head. That's what I'm going to say. And I, again, just for clarification's sake, I don't care what the scores are. When this game's reviews go live the day before it comes out, two days before, three days, whenever it is, I will not, like, I'll read it. I'll see what people have to say. Look for any new tidbits. I will not care at all what this game gets. If it gets a 70, if it gets a 77, if it gets an 80, 88, if it gets a 92, I will not care, okay? Because it's not about the score, and it circles back all the way to the beginning. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what others say. It doesn't matter what Metacritic's number that's in green says, if it's good. It matters what you think, Okay? everybody's different. Everybody's going to see it a little bit different. It doesn't matter. I, I want to make that crystal clear. It's going to be funny to see if the game does get brought down. So I say an 80, you know, 84 ish, keeping in mind, I actually think that's with it being brought down. I actually think this game maybe is going to be more of like an 86, 87. I, I, I actually think it could get that close. And it actually follows along with what I've been... Like, this is not new. I've been predicting this for a while. It's not going to be a, a generational game. It's not going to be a game that I think gets like a 94. Like the, this, Now, I wouldn't say the most special games get it because there's some very divisive games. The Last was Part 2 being an example. Very high score. But that doesn't mean it's a game of the generation to, to people. It does not mean that, right? Again, you have to keep all these things into consideration. But I don't think it's going to be a game of the generation. But I do think it's going to be a contender for game of the year. And what does a game of the year, you know, what are some score? I mean, you can get in the mid to high eights and be a game of the year, you know, with, uh, let's say, the gaming critics and stuff, right? So I really think 
that's probably where it lands. It's it's probably a mid 80s game. It's definitely above average. It does some things extraordinarily well. It sets a, it sets a benchmark for some things. I think the lore and the authenticity, that kind of stuff, it sets a benchmark. The rest of it, they're more like followers. They try to look at trends and they're, you know, it's similar to other games, right? They're not they're not trend setters. Maybe they're trend setters for you know, how, how specific it looks, how, how, you know, perfect, I guess. If, if you want to throw perfect, perfect is a tough word to use, right? So that's that's kind of what I'd imagine. And so, you know, if it gets that and then it kind of gets pulled back a little bit because of the hate for it. And again, secret hate. I don't, we've talked about it. These sites, some of them are pretty clever. They're not going to go at it direct because they know people aren't going to tolerate it. They're going to kind of take the, the long way around and kind of attack it from behind and stuff. So, I mean, we've seen it happen. By the way, quick thing to throw in there. I don't know if I'm getting a code. I personally highly doubt it. But also, more importantly, when I do a review for this, if you are new, but you watched the beginning of the video, so maybe you already know this, I will not give a score. If people ask me, like, where would you put it in a range, I tend to give an answer. But I, I do not give any game in the look at look back at the years I've been around. I don't give game scores. So just so we're all kind of prepared, if you're going into my review saying, oh, boy, can't wait to see Alex's score he gave the game. No, sir. Nope, not doing it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I'll see you all on the next one.